recent uh, developments uh, you know do you have a different view around the cost of building foundational models <laughs> yeah um so first of all if that's a if that's a reference to a comment i made here a few years ago about the cost uh <laughs> i think that was taken out of context um that was a very specific time when there was a certain scaling thing where i thought you know it's gonna and i still think to stay on that frontier of pre-trained models is expensive but one of the most exciting things that's happened to me since, that I think's happened in the industry since, is we're now in a world where um, we made incredible progress with distillation. We learned a lot to do small models, and these reasoning models in particular can be, it's not cheap, it's still expensive to train them, but it's doable. Uh, and I think that's gonna lead to an explosion of really great creativity, and you, you know, India should be a, a leader there, of course. Um, there's. There's two sort of different ways you can look at the costs of models. So to stay at the frontier, um, we believe those costs will continue to rise on this exponential curve, but also the returns to increasing intelligence are exponential in terms of the economic value, the scientific value that you can create. Um, so, you know, we're doing this big Stargate project and that's gonna go like this. On the other side of it, um, the, the cost for a given unit of intelligence one year later seems to fall by about 10x. Moore's law was a 2x every 18 months for the number of transitions on a chip, and that changed the world if you waited a few decades. But what's happening with the reduction in cost in AI models is, is extraordinary. Now, I don't think it means that the world's gonna need any less AI hardware because you bring the cost down and just the people are gonna use it for a lot more things. The total number of dollars will go up. But, uh, you know, it, that's, a, that's a really exciting thing happening.